Alright, what's poppin' people? We're back at it again. I'm gonna give another Pokemon a spotlight video. Been a few days since we've actually <laughs> done a normal upload. I wanted to make sure that the people that don't get to have a chance to go out to the stream, well, that they don't miss, miss another stream, I guess. Um, yeah. And we're gonna be covering Duraludon today, because I think this is a very interesting Pokemon. I think it's kind of polarizing in the sense that, well, I'll, I'll give a definition for polarizing. Um, it, the opinions of it range from it's broken ban to it's awful. Why would anyone use this? Um, yeah, <laughs> man, this, this is going to be like a weird um, little sidetrack I'm going to go on here. But I once called a Pokemon polarizing in a post on the forum and someone called that a buzzword. And my my gut instinct was just to, I didn't I didn't post it, but my instinct was to post. I don't think you know what polarizing means. It's not a buzzword. It's just a way to describe how the, the the general opinion. I don't know, man. Anyhow, guys, if you haven't yet, if you're watching this video and you aren't subscribed, what are you doing? I think based on statistics, about 30% of the guys that watch these videos aren't subscribed, and honestly, I feel like you're just missing out. You're sort of griefing yourself because you're causing yourself to potentially miss out on uploads, you know? Maybe at this point you've been watching for a while, and you thought that you were subscribed because, you know, my videos are coming up in your feed because you watch a lot, and you're like, yeah, this dude's great. But you, got, you gotta hit that button, and hey, if you're already subscribed, don't think you're off the hook. You gotta press that like button. Come on, guys. Let's support, let's support the boy. And now guys, as I said, I wanted to cover Duraludon because I think the opinions of it range pretty impressively. I've generally been on the side that Duraludon is not ban-worthy whatsoever, and that it is kind of difficult to justify using. Especially when we had Drampa in the tier, I think Duraludon was just near impossible to justify on a lot of teams because Drampa just offered so much more. In my eyes, Duraludon is mostly just there to wall break, at least for running specs. I do have multiple sets here, all ranging in viability, but I do think if you were to look at specs Duraludon versus specs Drampa, and even specs Egialola, it was just so easy to say Drampa was better. And obviously Drampa's banned, so, you know, probably is better. <laughs> we wouldn't ban something that was just objectively, you know, bad. But I do think there's something to say to Duraludon's previous struggles being heavily correlated to how good Drampa was. Duraludon offered speed, and that was really about it. I mean, Drampa's defensive potential really just let it do so much more. That combined with the fact that Duraludon isn't particularly strong when not running specs, I would say. Like, 120 base special attack is never going to be bad. And so even when you're running something like, say, Scarf Duraludon or this, you know, lead set, these strong moves backed by a high special attack start are still going to let it do a lot of damage. But I feel like a lot of people just get turned away by the fact that this mod has such poor bulk, isn't really a good steel type because it doesn't resist fairy, isn't a good dragon type because it doesn't resist fire in a meta that Ninetales does hold a pretty prevalent space in. Whereas Drampa didn't have these same issues. Now, obviously, it's, you know, it was just straight weak to Fairy, but it doesn't really matter when you're Duraludon getting o code by, you know, Whimsicott. That's a Steel type. And so, the big issue, I think, for Duraludon this entire generation, or just <laughs> the entire time it's been in NU, has been just that team building around it can feel very awkward. Because you're trying to patch up these holes that you have by having a Steel type doesn't really do what Steel types do. But then you end up compounding all these other weaknesses if you want to fit in a Steel type. Or if you want to fit another dragon type or something, which please just don't. I do not think stacking dragons is very good with Duraludon, unless you're doing it on Hyper Offense. <laughs> but yeah, this Pokemon just is kind of weird to build around as a result. But I do think there is potential. Now, I put Specs set first, the Specs set first. I don't think this is the best set. Not at all. Um, I've had the least success with this set because it is a pain to build with, for example. Um, let's see. So if you're looking at my Duraludon teams that we have here. We've got Scarf Duraludon, Lead Duraludon, Iron Defense, Lead Duraludon, and here's just this one random spec set. This team used to look different, but we ended up with something like this. And the idea was that Specs Duraludon could bully the shit out of stuff that Rabombi doesn't like to deal with. 
The problem we ended up running into was just defensively, it was so hard to build with this because I honestly am not sure. I'm not convinced that Duraludon is that great of a breaker because I think it offers a lot more in some of these other roles. I feel like in Inu, the thing with, that still holds Duraludon back is you can find the breaker slot a lot more easily with other options right now. And if you give that to Duraludon, sure, you can press stuff, but I think Duraludon offers more when you're using it like as a Scarfer. I think it's still really strong, and it has the nice niche of being able to like draw in certain Pokemon and chip away at them. Also, this probably should be Body Press, not Thunderbolt, more than I think about it. I want to be able to do a little bit more as the Fisks come in. But like, while Spike's Draco is super strong, you know, it's chunking resists even for like at least a third. My issue has always been that it still feels just slightly slow, too slow, just slightly. 85 is a really good speed tier, I would say in general. But like Toxicroak felt really good at that spot and really overwhelming with that speed because it had priority and it had a way to boost without locking itself into a move. Draladon's a lot more exploitable as a result of it commonly running specs. You, know, you lock it a Draco and you're letting in a Rabombi for free. Lock it a Flash Cannon, there are plenty of steel resists. Lock it a Thunderbolt, yep. That's a great move to be locked into. You lock into this useless move. <laughs> but I don't think that to say that Specs Dralodon is necessarily bad. As we said, Draco's really strong. You back that up with Specs. You back that up with a good speed tier. There's not really a whole lot that initially threatens you out. Dralodon's really good at taking advantage of pretty much every bulky Pokemon in the tier. A lot of them can't respond back to it with all too much damage. Whereas it can respond... To them with significant amounts of damage. You know, its switch in pool is kind of just limited as well to the specially defensive steel types. Even those, a lot of them don't have recovery, so Draco's will chip away at them. Body press, honestly, is only here just because it's a filler move. One of the big issues I do have with Duraludon is its coverage is so bad. Body press on paper is kind of nice. But it only is doing 3% more to most of the things that would try to switch it to Draco. <laughs> so it's a little bit sad. I don't know. I don't hate this set. I have had massive issues building with it, though. If y'all have had good success with Spexter Aladon, let me know in the comments what y'all have been running with it. I do think there's something to say about, like, Quiver Dance or Bombi with it. Fairy types in general just appreciate the hell out of Duraludon, you know, exerting immense amounts of pressure on Steel types. Because at the end of the day, Choice Specs Draco Meteor is always going to be a good thing to have. I just haven't been able to get this to work. And I've tried to do building with multiple other people and we haven't been able to get much going. So if you're a Duraludon believer and you think Specs Duraludon is super overbearing, please let me know your secrets. Because I would like to get this set onto a team that I feel is like competent because just again, there's not a lot that's all much more all too much more fun to do than just clicking the Draco Meteor button over and over again. Here's what the, I think I've had the most success with, and I think it's also a testament to how good Hyper Offense is right now. Lead Duraludon on, like, specifically Aurora Veil teams is very convenient. Now, one of our lovely former off in the room, K, he's mentioned how one of his issues with Hyper Offense is that it doesn't have a great anti-lead, something that's, like, fast with taunt. So think back to, like, say, Azelf in previous iterations of UU with dual screens. Azelf's really nice because it's fast, it can get up Stealth Rock, it can prevent the opponent from getting momented with Taunt. Even if you want to look at this generation's OU, um, Excadrill it can kind of do similar things. It can't Taunt, but it's got Rapid Spin, which in Elite Slot's pretty nice to have if you're trying to just, you know, prevent your opponent from doing a whole lot while you're just trying to, you know, set up your rocks. You could just say, nah, you're not getting up your own rocks. And being able to self-K with Steel Beam is really good for Excadrill. If you want to look at his elf, being able to self-K with Explosion. Well, Duraludon still can't really do a whole lot of that in terms of preventing your opponent from making momentum, but it does have Steel Beam, so it does have part of that equation. And it's really helped too, because compared to Excadrill, Steel Beam is super fucking hard for Duraludon to, um, or for Pokemon to take from Duraludon. You know, Excadrill horrible special attack. It doesn't really do anything with Steel Beam. It's really there just to get out. Whereas with Duraludon, I mean, this move does 
you know, it nukes even something like Miltank. Duraludon in general is like, it's kind of like Izelf in that it's just so scary to stare down right at in the lead slot. And I do think this these are probably the three best moves for it. Draco is just super strong. Steel Beam, again, self-KO, and it's also super strong. And I do think that Body Press, people are still going to switch their Steel types into Duraludon. And this can net you, like, maybe an extra 30-something plus percent on, say, a Galafisk. So if it's trying to switch into Draco, that's going to do, like, what, 22-ish? And in, in two turns, you can have Galafisk down to half if you hit it with a Draco and then a Body Press. So this is really good at opening the way for teammates like Swords Dance, Soul Valley Dragon, Quiver Dancer Bombi. Hell, even Vanillix, which is on this team for setting Aurora Veil, still appreciates Steel types being brought in and chipped. Especially defensive mons in general, really. And the speed's also really nice. 85 speed just it makes sure that you can get ahead of anything that may use Taunt outside of like a Lowland Persian. I can't think of anything faster than Duraludon with Taunt. Granted, I can't really think of anything slower than Duraludon that uses Taunt. Um, do we see anyone down here? Um, Alright guys, I think I, I, I don't really see anything slower than it with Taunt either. However, I'm sure there's some PU Pokemon someone might try to use with Taunt. <laughs> but Duraludon being so fast usually ensures that against most teams, what it can do is it can get up rocks and then it can throw off like a Steel Beam or a Draco and just nuke something. Now if someone leads with, say, a Whimsicott or a Bombi, yeah, they'll 2 it KO you. But Sash will still ensure that you do get the rocks up, or maybe you value just immediately removing a Pokemon like that with Steel Beam or Draco if it's something else. Duraldon just being so strong, and again, even the speed's helpful, it lets it exert a whole bunch of offensive pressure in that lead slot reliably get up rocks. It, while it's not an anti-lead in the sense of it hard halting opponent's progression, I think it still does some of that just through how good it is offensively. And now there's Scarf Duraludon. This is probably the set that I've had the second most success with. And I would say like you can't really do this conveniently in the builder. But I think Stealth Rock deserves to be like slashed like that in this last slot. And it really comes down to Duraludon's role in the team beyond just functioning as a revenge killer. So like we've said with the lead set, Duraludon is just supernaturally strong. And so it's a great revenge killer because it gets some KOs from higher ranges. You know, when you look at other revenge killers that Inu has, you got things like we've had Scarf Decidui at certain points in the tier. You've had um, Scarf Gallade, which is Duraludon's very similar to in terms of just raw power. If we want to go back to like the weaker revenge killers, it'd be like Scarf Decidui, um, Kangaskhan in a way. It's not a Scarfer, but it's a weaker revenge killer. Scarf Rotom. And Duraldon differentiates itself because it's just so much stronger. So Pokemon like, say, I mean, hell, Decidui, if you're going up against one of those, you can revenge kill that from a higher range. Something like a... Let's look at another Pokemon. Maybe you'd be looking to revenge kill. Maybe a Swords Dance Gallade. You're trying to revenge kill a Sneasel. Things like that. I mean, they're out on revenge kill Sneasel no matter what. But hey, typing helps. <laughs> and so, when we talk about role beyond just revenge killing, why did I have Iron Head here? Well, if your team needs a rocker, Duraldon is a great rocker still, I think, as a Scarfer. Because the last slot with Duraldon is kind of always just whatever you need it to be. Frankly, you probably could even drop Body Press for T-Bold. I just do want a way to hit Steel Types for a bit more damage. But Iron Head's great because if you want to dedicate Duraludon solely to Revenge Killing, I think it's the best last slot because it lets you be a pretty reliable Revenge Killer to Frost Moth. Now you could run Stone Edge there for, I believe, a guaranteed KO on Frost Moth. I don't think Iron Head always Oko's. It's like a 92 to 108 or something. I believe it's a, it's a favorable roll, so... If you're up against Substitute Frostmoth, so long as you get the sub broken, it'll probably be in range. But if you have adequate Frostmoth counterplay in the back, say you've got like a Silvalli Steel or something, or a Ninetales, Pokemon like that, then maybe you just want Stealth Rock. And that does open up some other options for your other slots, which is cool. 
And then last, this set's... I'm not too convinced this is a great set. But I do know people at least consider it as an option. I know it was something people talked about right when we got Duraladon. And I don't think it's picked up as much as nearly like any of these first three sets. These are like much more common. But I do think there's at least something to note about its existence. This lets you just strictly beat the Steel types. And the nice thing about it too is something like Galarian Stunfisk can't actually really do anything back to you when you get those iron defenses up. I know some people have run Earth Power just in case of Duraladon. But most of them, like the grand majority, are still running that Earthquake. And Duraladon's got pretty good physical bulk as is. So if you get those nice boosts with Iron Defense, it's going to be much harder. And in terms of coverage, Flash Cannon Thunderbolt I think is definitely the best. Thun Essentially with Steel and Fighting Coverage, the only Pokemon that are going to be able to answer you are going to be some like bulky water types. I think like Jellicent, Cramorant I guess. It's pretty much those two. Thunderbolt at least gives you one method of damaging them. I'm pretty sure you need like Thunder to be able to reliably to hit KO Jellicent. But if you can at least force a little bit of damage onto it, then maybe you can do something with Thunderbolt. At the end of the day, it's not really going to be threatening too much damage back onto you. And every turn, it's going to risk this 10% paralysis. And you get paralyzed once, you're losing your Jellicent, more than likely. I think that's going to be it for what we have to say about Duraludon. Again, I think this is a very interesting Pokemon with how varying the yeah, with how varying the opinions have been so far of it. And I could do wonder, as we head towards the end of the month, will Duraludon work its way upwards in terms of the perceived viability of it? Is it going to just kind of peter out somewhere around like B plus-ish, A minus in people's heads? Or will people just disregard it? I don't think it'll ever go disregarded because it has a very strong Draco without competition for that slot. But I do th I mostly wonder about its potential to rise in the eyes of people. I think its issue is always going to be how prevalent steel types are, mostly as a response to Rabombi and Whimsicott prevalence, and even Sneasel to some degree. As well as Pokemon like Vanillix and Frostmoth that aren't in the eyes of people to the degree maybe that they should be. But they still do exist. And these trends do just kind of hurt Duraludon at the end of the day. I'm very curious to see if it'll be able to overcome them. That's going to be it for me. Hope you enjoy the rest of your evening, morning, afternoon, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever the hell, whenever the hell you're watching this. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.